legacy of the 20th century is the realization of the concept of the oneness of humanity. At the beginning of the 19th century, countries were divided and separated. With the advent of rapid scientific progress, by the end of the century, countries were much more connected. Successive communication expansion allowed people to talk with one another from one part of the world to the other. Now the question is, how can we be spiritually connected? How can we catch up our spiritual nature to our material nature? The message of Baha'u'llah is about how we can connect human hearts in a global society. As our human society progressed through the stage of infancy to adolescence and maturity, some systems began to disintegrate, while other systems are simultaneously being created. This is sometimes referred to as an integrative force. Baha'is strive every day in this process of integration to be conscientious of the fact that the oneness of the human race takes precedent over all other aspects of our identities. We have national identities, racial and ethnic identities, gender identities, and religious identities. These are all subordinate to our universal human identity. This is our truest identity, and it calls for the complete reorganization of human society, one that the world has never experienced before. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. In 1863 in Persia, Baha'u'llah, prophet founder of the Baha'i Faith, whose name means the glory of God, proclaimed his mission as the establishment of the oneness of humanity. He was banished from his homeland, persecuted, and imprisoned for well over 40 years. Under such conditions, he formulated his universal message of nonviolence, peace, and unity. He passed away in 1892. A year after his passing, his name was mentioned for the first time in America at the Parliament of World Religions. In the early years of the Baha'i Faith, a few thousand people joined the movement all across America. The community invited Baha'u'llah's eldest son, Abdu'l Baha, whose name means the servant of God, to visit the United States. The purpose of his visit was to share Baha'u'llah's message of racial unity, of equality of men and women, and the harmony of science and religion, and world peace. The history of the Baha'i Faith and name dates back to the early 1900s at Greenacre in Elliott, Maine. Soon the followers spread to all parts of the state, from Portland to Augusta to Bangor and beyond. Today, there are a few hundred Baha'is who reside in Maine. On August 17th, Abdul Baha arrived in Elliott, Maine, at Greenacre, a conference center founded by Sarah Farmer to bring together people of diverse backgrounds and points of view. Sarah was the daughter of electrical genius Moses Garish Farmer and humanitarian Hannah Shapley Farmer, who established a residence for poor women and their children. Their home had been a way station on the Underground Railroad and they knew Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, and other reformers. In 1893, at the World's Parliament of Religions, Sarah invited Swami Vivekananda and Dharmampala to speak at Greenacre, where social reformers, educators, artists, scientists, religious seekers, and philosophers met to share ideas. The following year, Sarah dedicated Greenacre to the ideals of peace and unity and had the first known peace flag raised. Greenacre emerged as a center, if not the very heart, of liberal religion in the United States. In 1900, Sarah met Abdul Baha in Akka and embraced his teachings. As Abdul Baha approached Greenacre by car, multicolored Japanese lanterns and 500 eager souls lined the road. He stayed in the Greenacre Inn, in a room on the third floor. Every evening, Abdul Baha spoke to several hundred on the oneness of humanity, the need for world peace, and the role of love. On August 23rd, Abdu'l-Baha said, We have finished our work here. 
We have sown a seed. The suitcases were packed and the carriage readied. As they lined both sides of the road to say farewell, people lamented and wept. On the way, Abdul Baha stopped for one last visit with Sarah Farmer, who fell at his feet weeping. Baha'u'llah's revelation proclaims that we are all members of one universal family. The Baha'i teachings are not just for Baha'is. Our sole purpose is to serve humanity and we are constantly reaching out in the spirit of collaboration with others. Baha'is are striving to create a coherent community life in places where they live. Devotional gatherings bring people from various religious and ethnic backgrounds together to share prayers and music. In children's class, they gather to sing, play, make arts and crafts, and learn spiritual concepts that help them prepare for a future life of service to their communities. The Junior Youth Empowerment Programs are designed for middle schoolers aged 11 to 15. Mentors, also known as animators, guide adolescents as they explore topics of social justice and spirituality. Through collective service projects, junior youth cultivate a capacity to become active participants in the betterment of their society. Study circles are spaces where Baha'is and their friends gather to explore spiritual concepts and how to apply them to their daily lives. Participants deepen on the Word of God and develop skills to serve the community. The idea that everyone has a part to play, no matter how large or small, is very important because it speaks to the idea that we are united in the same purpose. The process of universal unification has already begun and there is no turning back. It is going to be long, it is going to be hard, and there are going to be a lot of challenges on the way. But Baha'u'llah tells us, these fruitless strifes, these ruinous wars shall pass away and the most great peace shall come.